Hello everyone clinicians, this is Ali Nese and today's video is a follow-up to a quick tutorial I did recently where I described the posterior superior alveolar nerve block as the best way to administer local anesthesia for root canal therapy in all maxillary molars. The goal of this technique is achieving profound anesthesia for root canal therapy without the need to administer the additional and very painful paddle infiltration. After that tutorial, many of you guys asked me to describe my personal PSA technique in more detail and this is basically the purpose of this video. The PSA block is really a predictable method of achieving profound anesthesia painlessly. And how do I know that? Well, I've, I've done over 22,000 root canals and I've never had to give the panel a shot to my patients for my maxillary molars. So I know from experience that you really don't need to give it. But first, in order to demonstrate the PSA technique, we need to review a little bit of anatomy of the region. So we know that the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve leaves the middle cranial fossa through foramen rotundum, and then it passes through the pterygopalatine fossa before entering the infraorbital foramen. Inside the infraorbital canal, it gives off branches to both the MSA and the ASA nerves, which supply the maxillary premolar and all anterior teeth. But here's the catch. Before entering the infraorbital canal, the PSA nerve branches off of the maxillary nerve and then it passes through the pterygomaxillary fissure before re-entering posterior maxilla through the PSA foramina. The PSA nerve will then go on to innervate the maxillary molars buccal and paddle roots. As a result, you can understand that blocking the PSA should be more successful than just mere buccal and paddle infiltration because you're blocking exposed nerve prior to entering the bone rather than having to um, you know, penetrate through the bone. So successful administration of the PSA is about getting the local anesthetic at this exact site and an adequate volume in order to block the nerve to the maxillary molars. Usually a single cartridge of vasoconstrictor containing anesthetic is enough for the second and third molars. But for the first molar, an additional buccal infiltration is sometimes needed because the mesiobuccal root is occasionally innervated by the MSA as well as the PSA. But uh, what are the risks of this injection? Uh, well, the risks are actually pretty minimal. Uh, the only risk is inadvertent injection into the maxillary plexus of veins that is adjacent to the lateral pterygoid muscle. If we realize that the plexus is superficial to the bone, then we can actually uh, reduce our chance of uh, problems by aspirating constantly with a thick gauge needle during and at the beginning of the injection in order to reduce uh, the risk of inadvertent intravascular injections that could cause potential trismus. So, now it's time for me to introduce you to my friend Ralph here. Ralph has agreed to join me to demonstrate this technique for you. As you can see, the best way to practice anesthesia is to obtain a, a dry skull so that you can go over the bony landmarks that you need to know before you can administer this shot successfully. The idea is to have adequate pre-anesthesia before injection with a thicker gauge needle in order to reduce in injection pain, needle deflection, and also the false negative aspirations that can happen with thinner needles. I will go over these topics in more detail in future tutorials, but it's also helpful to bend the needle a little bit so that you can get better access to the bone. And once you have achieved some bony contact, then aspirate and check, then proceed to inject slowly the full content of the local anesthetic cartridge inside the PSA site. Now aspirate a few times during each injection, making sure that you're not in a blood vessel. Also, instead of giving you averages for how deep you should go uh, with a needle, let me just say that you need to evaluate preoperative radiographs and also palpate the injection site to see where is the inferior border of the zygomatic process and also how long the roots are so that you don't end up injecting and having early bony contact by having contact with the inferior border of the zygomatic process or injecting too shallow when you have deep and long roots. So you need to know where you are in posterior maxilla. Keep in mind that the injection site is generally around the curve of the maxilla in an axial view and slightly superior and posterior to the maxillary second or third molar. Always assess the posterior board of the maxilla before injection in order to avoid injecting either too anteriorly or also too far inferiorly. One challenge in administering this shot is when patients have pronounced mandibulocoronoid notch or have too much buccal fat pad. This 
may obscure your view of the injection site. And the best way to alleviate this problem is by asking patients to move their lower jaw to the same side that you're injecting. This moves the coronoid notch out of the way and exposes the injection site area for proper needle insertion. So if you're injecting on the left side, for example, then have your patient's lower jaw, the mandible, move to the same side. And that opens up the area. So here's Ralph making the demonstration, injecting on the left side, you would have to have uh, the lower jaw move to the same side in order to open the buccal shelf. If you need additional anesthesia in the paddle or gingival rim, in order to apply the rubber dam, then you can always deposit uh, just a few drops of, uh, of, of your local anesthetic just before you start the procedure. Otherwise, uh, this is pretty much the whole technique. The PSA block is really not hard to administer and it's very predictable and safe while being very comfortable to the patient. So this is my magic formula for all my maxillary first molar anesthesia prior to root canal therapy. I start by pre-anesthesia, which basically involves topical anesthetic and injection of a half a carpule of mepivacaine plane around the PSA and also around the mesial uh, buccal root. Then I wait about a minute for pre-anesthesia to take effect and then proceed to inject one carpule of anesthetic with one one in 100,000 um, epinephrine for the PSA block and then an additional carpule of the same anesthetic as a buccal infiltration around the mesial buccal root. You can use either lidocaine or articaine. Uh, either will do as long as you have a vasoconstrictor, which is the key thing to achieve pulpal anesthesia. I wait about five minutes and then pulp test the tooth. Uh, and if it's uh, pulpally uh, numb, then I add a drop of anesthetic to the paddle sulcus, only if it's needed to apply the clamp. And then I get started. This technique requires a good understanding of anatomy. And therefore, the best way to practice it is by making an appointment with Ralph here. So he will show you the way. And if not, find another skull in your own neighborhood and explore the anatomy using your anesthetic setup and your needle. Mastering this technique will save your patients from anesthesia failure in maxillary molars, as well as completely avoiding the intense pain associated with that dreaded paddle root infiltration. For Rivald Endo, this is Ali Nese with Ralph, and we hope that you found this tutorial helpful.